Okay, so I'm here with Tina Wiles at my tutor in South Naperville. Tina, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be a tutor? Yeah, so it's actually surprising. My degree is actually in engineering, but um, I've been doing tutoring now for over 15 years. I'd always thought about becoming a teacher. Um, I did go back and got certified to be a high school math teacher, um, but my passion actually lies in, crazy as it sounds, ACT and SAT prep. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> I should all say that. <laughs> yeah, and why I love ACT and SAT prep, for me, it's all about increasing opportunities and increasing confidence for students. So the higher scores they get, the more confidence and opens up doors for both college and money for school. Perfect. So tell us a little about your family. I think you live here in South Naperville. I do live in South no. Naperville. I have four sons. The oldest is a freshman in college, and I have a junior and a freshman at Niqua, and I have a sixth grader. Okay, great. So you work with kids from Niqua, from Wabonzi, from Matea, and yeah, from high perfect. schools all over the area? Yeah, so District 203 in Naperville, District 202, and even 308 in Oswego. Okay. And um, yeah, the whole area I've had students come to me. And I know from personal experience with my kiddos, I had one of my kiddos get help in math from you in, gosh, I want to say sixth grade and again maybe in eighth grade. Yeah. And then one of my kiddos got help getting ready for the SAT. So do you, what age do you start working with kids? Um, I typically start in high school. So okay. there are special cases that I'll make for working in middle school. Okay. Um, but my zone of genius lies in okay. helping those high school kids. Okay. And what subjects? Besides SAT and, SA and ACT, we'll talk more about that, but what subjects do you tutor in? Yeah, so um, obviously math teacher, math of yeah. all levels, um, science, yeah. um, chemistry, bio, physics, oh, I wow. can do, but I have a love-hate relationship okay. with it. Um, and then just general things like study skills and um, like any kind of pressure situation techniques, right? Like, mm -hmm. so big tests, obviously, but finals, I help do a lot of study prep for finals, that kind of thing. Okay. And when you said uh, math all the way through high school, do you do AP as well as yeah. standard classes? Yeah, AP, okay. I tutor up through Calc 3. Okay, So. okay, I don't really know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I did see on your Facebook page that you just recently hired another teacher. I did. Yeah. Um, I hired uh, Laura DeBezik. She's going to work with me. She's an AP um, English teacher at NEQA. So okay. she works with juniors. So she's going to be working um, during the weekends okay. with um, any kind of verbal prep for ACT or SAT. Okay. So grammar reading. And what about, is there still an essay in the SAT? Is she, is um, the no, there's no essay anymore on okay. the SAT. There is an optional essay on the ACT. Okay. So yeah, she can help with that. And she'll probably end up doing things as we get closer to that time of year with seniors applying for college, a lot of essay help. That's what writing. I was going to yeah. ask because yeah. I feel like, I know in my experience when my kiddos sat down, I think in their junior year this right. summer, yeah. to write that yep. between junior and senior year, that was a pretty big, you know, pretty big task. Exactly. So you'll help with that as yeah. well. Yeah, so we'll be able to help with that as okay. well. Yeah. Okay, great. So tell me, um, if somebody is interested in getting tutoring, but they don't live here in South Naperville and it's a little bit too far for them to drive, are you doing online tutoring? Yeah, I do online tutoring and I also have um, an online program that's online, even if for people that live in the area. Oh, okay. That's a monthly membership for SAT, the ACT will be coming soon, where it has um, over 50 videos online. So they can, it's kind of like a self-paced thing, and then we meet once a week. So they can be able to watch oh. videos and areas they need help, and then I have a set plan for what we cover each week. And are these videos that you made? Yeah. Oh, so you made this whole series exactly. of videos. Exactly. Oh, very interesting. And so people pay a monthly fee, do they yeah. have to commit for a certain amount nope. of time? No, nope. oh. it's just, it's $47 a month. They okay. can cancel any time. So okay. maybe a, a quick refresh before the exam, or I have people contacting me like freshman year in high school saying, I'm concerned about test scores already. What can we do? That would be where you're getting a little bit of exposure and practice, okay. but not overwhelming. Interesting. And you do private tutoring yes. and you do small group tutoring? You got it. So tell me a little bit about those. <laughs> so obviously private tutoring is the most uh, hands-on approach, right? Like the um, specifically diving into what the student needs. Um, small group tutoring is a maximum of six students, so it's still very, like I'm working with each kid individually, yeah. um, but we'll meet for the five or six weeks leading up to a test date, okay. and um, 
more affordable option, mm -hmm. right, that's than private thinking. tutoring. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Too. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I've been in the waiting room, you see kids sort of coming through on their own, you know, yes. they're driving, right? So exactly. They, drive, they come in, have all their books, come in, study, visit with their friends a little bit. Exactly. And jump in and get to work. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I always see people in the waiting room. It looks like they're excited to be here. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, yeah, but yeah, I try to make it as fun as I possibly can. Yeah, I don't know if you're doing it because of COVID, but I know my kiddos love the little treats. Yeah. <laughs> the little candy treats on the table. It's like, no matter how old they are. Exactly, right? exactly. Like yeah. A little bit of bribery. <laughs> so the SAT is changing a lot. How do you keep up with what's changing on the SAT and the ACT every year or so that you can then share that with the kids? Yeah, so um, three times a year, I'm able to get copies of the the test. So mm -hmm. when um, when students take it three times a year, they can order. It's called the test release. Okay. So I go through and take the test myself at least three times a year. Oh. So I'm able to stay on top of changes that are taking place. Mm -hmm. And then I do a lot of education through the College Board and ACT. Okay. Um, so keep up to date of the changes. Yes, the biggest change right now is that the uh, SAT for this year's freshmen, so okay. like my, my son, okay. right? My <laughs> and your, yeah, and your kiddo yeah. too. Um, their junior year uh -huh. in the spring, they're supposedly doing completely away with the paper SAT and it'll all be online. Oh. And it's supposed to be a, a predictive test. So what that means is like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the GMAT or the GRE. Basically you do a problem and if you get it right, you go to one problem and if you get it wrong, you go to a different problem. So basically, the it'll zone in more on supposedly exactly what your score is uh -huh. but it'll all be online so we'll see ACT was also supposed to do an online thing that with COVID took a huge hit and oh, turned around and I haven't heard anything else about okay. that so but that's the game plan right now for College Board is that SAT will no longer be a paper test okay so when somebody has a kid like mine in ninth grade this mm -hmm. year what do you start prepping for the SAT without overwhelming them? Like a great question. So I typically recommend the ideal time to start prepping is the summer before junior year. Okay. Okay, and because usually there's not as much pressure going on, <laughs> right? Like as far as during the school year with time, um, we go through and learn the strategies, we review content, and we do a lot of mindset stuff as well, okay. like self-confidence and trusting your gut. Okay. and um we do that if you do that during the summer then the goal is to take a test the fall of junior year okay so then you kind of know where you're at and what you need to do to get to your goals okay interesting yeah um and there used to be the preliminary sat does that still exist it does so obviously things changed a little bit with covid okay. so this year at least in 204 um the freshmen and sophomores will be taking a psat in april okay. when the juniors are taking the actual sat okay so yes because i know this year's juniors so my one of my sons is a junior he hasn't taken a psat since freshman or uh, eighth grade okay. in school interesting <laughs> yeah and if you, if you had a freshman now would that online class be too much would you i mean if for that, that between sophomore and junior year, would they be able to do that online with your Yeah, classes? they'd be able to do that online and then too. Do it once a week, is right? It once a week or once a month. It, it was once a week. The okay. class, at the the calls. Um, that's a really good question, and it completely depends on the student. Mm -hmm. And even my own kids are different. So for my junior, that would have been too much, and okay. he like didn't even want to think about it. And in fact, he has a test in a couple of weeks. He doesn't want to think about. Okay. <laughs> Where my freshman is extremely competitive <laughs> and like has his goal set on like University of Chicago and right like really competitive schools yeah. so doing some prep and trying to learn some strategies earlier can help because mm -hmm. you can actually apply those in school too interesting interesting yeah well that's great I'm really excited <laughs> for like, I mean, it's, you know you don't think about tutoring and test prep being exciting but you, <laughs> you make it sound exciting well thank you I try I yeah. love what I do yeah, I can tell I yeah. can tell yeah. I can. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about what's going on now in the education world and testing world? No, oh, the, the testing world is a double-edged sword, right? And I'm definitely not a fan of that the tests have so much importance. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, it's one of the only ways that from the college's viewpoint, they can see capabilities, mm -hmm. right? Because when I, I, I taught inner city Chicago for two years, I guarantee what a 4.0 GPA was at my inner city Chicago school, 
does not equate to a 4.0 in 204, right? Mm -hmm. So grade point averages don't necessarily help colleges tell exactly mm -hmm. ability levels. Obviously they could see the transcripts too, but um, the mm -hmm. testing is the only thing that's the same for literally everybody. Mm -hmm. So they're able to see abilities. So I, you know, we hear in the news about schools that are going test optional. Yeah. Or no test, no exactly. test required. Right, right. How do they then, do you know, how do they rate students? How do they decide who to admit? So um, obviously they look at grade point averages, they look at transcripts, they look at the applications, right, and the letters, recommendation letters that are written. Um, but more kids than ever are ending up on wait lists um, and being deferred. Okay. And so I think they're really just kind of putting off accepting and looking at who all is coming in and oh, a lot of people are applying to a lot of colleges because mm -hmm. the, there's no re requirement right i've had kids that apply to 20 plus colleges no. right so i think they kind of wait and see which kids are saying yes and which kids are saying no and what kind of mm -hmm. spots they have left open um for uh my son goes to grand valley and it's in near grand rapids mm -hmm. uh, grand valley state and uh, grand rapids michigan and he did not need test scores to get in, but he needed test scores for scholarship money. Okay. So that also happens at a lot of schools too. So is it many schools that are out there that are test optional? Or a lot of schools are now. Oh really? Yeah, a lot of, still carried over from COVID. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll continue, like right now they kind of re-upped the no test requirements, a lot of the schools okay. did for this year's juniors. <laughs> right. I don't know if this year's sophomores are gonna still see the same okay. trend happen. But you still think it has value to study, to take the SAT, for things like scholarships, even if a school isn't requesting a test? Yeah, I think, like, because even, like, my junior, not a good test taker, yeah. I'm making him take it, <laughs> simply because we have an option then, yeah. where he can submit the score if he wants to, or he doesn't need to, right? And so I have found that happening with a lot of people, like, I'm going to try my best, try to get this test score. But if I can't get what I want, I'll, I'll uh, try to apply test optional. Oh, I see. I've also heard of schools that if you apply test optional, they might say, um, we're not accepting or denying you yet, but we want to see a test score. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. So yeah. it sounds like so it's, it's, yeah, it's still unfortunately, like it. it's still, <laughs> fortunately for me as yeah. a business, right? But um, unfortunately for kids, I think it's still um, important. Great. Okay. Yeah. And so what is your, um, what's your website? Is it my, the number my, two? You got it. TLR? Yes. Dot com? Yep. <laughs> okay, well, I always have to think about it when I type yeah. it in. Yeah, my, the number two, T-O-R dot com, okay, my good. tutor. And people can find out everything they need to know. And you can book your appointments right online. You got it. And you're not, you're not bound. You're not to buy a series of appointments. No. You can come in and do a one-off for a test. Exactly. Or you can come in and do a series. Is that right? That's exactly yeah, right. Which so I love. yeah, and it's all because every kid's completely different, and so some kids need only once or twice, and then other kids need more than that. Great. Well, Tina, it was so nice to talk to you today. Nice to talk to you too. Business. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. by. Have a great day. You too.